Hello AP Calculus AP students, Mr. Record here for video number, I guess it's nine, I'm starting to run out of fingers, that deals with topics 4.4 and 4.5. We're talking about related rates. We're now moving into a special genre of problem that involves a cone, and I have two videos, number nine here, and my next one, number 10, that's going to deal with that particular type of geometric shape and they're a little tricky so these are certainly uh, good ones to watch they've appeared on the AP exam in past years I know colleges like to use these uh, so let's take a look at a pile of sand so here we go cone problem number one our pile of sand it says that sand is poured on a beach creating a cone whose radius is always equal to twice its height if the sand is poured at a rate of 20 cubic inches per second, how fast is the height of the conical pile changing at the time the height's two inches? So again, a lot of information in the problem. You're gonna to wanna to be able to categorize it, organize it, put it into little bins and start thinking about how you're going to use it. So I always like to start with a picture. You don't have to identify it as a picture. It's probably obvious it's going to be a picture. But this cone, if you think about it, is going to be an inverted cone. So like an upside down cone, something maybe like this. And I know it wouldn't be like perfectly pointy at the top, but it's going to be pointy enough so that we could construe this as a cone. And as you know, when the sand is poured and it makes that shape, we create a height and the height is changing. And that height is certainly getting bigger, as you can tell. And the radius is likely changing as well. And I think it would be getting bigger. The question is, how fast is the height of the cha cone changing at the moment that it's two inches high, given the rate of change of how much sand. Well, <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and start identifying some of our other information. Our given is typically going to be some kind of rate in the problem, and you don't really have a bunch of numbers here to choose from. I see 20, it is a rate, and it is the rate of the sand that's being poured. Now that's a little different, because you have to think about all of the sand in this problem accounts for the volume of this cone. So what you have here is a dv dt. Again, something that's a little different. We're typically not given a rate of change of an overall shape, uh, like a volume or even an area at times, but that's what's given in this problem. We are out to find, well, I already mentioned this, how fast is the height changing? So we're looking for dh dt specifically when the h value is 2. And then we have our equation. And fortunately, you won't have to work real hard for the equation because an equation as such would be provided for you. And that would be our good friend, the volume of a cone, which is one third pi r squared times h. That's a formula, like I said, that will always be provided. And this formula's got a bit of an issue with it. And I think that's where we need to go right now. If you were to take the derivative of this equation as it stands, you have to realize that there is a product rule that would take place. And this product rule would result in a dr dt and a dh dt hanging around. Not to mention the r and the h's will still be there. And I need you to see that this dr dt is a problem. It is a big problem. We don't know a lot of information about the dr dt. It's a bad variable. r is a bad variable. I'm okay with h hanging around because I've got some information about what dh dt uh, is going to be. Well, I need to find dh dt, and I have the information about what h is. So you have to recognize that a lot of these cone problems, we have to fix that. And there fortunately is a bit of language in the problem, the language that says radius is always twice the height that we are going to use to our advantage. And it doesn't really matter where you put that information. Maybe we put that information over here, r equals two times h, perfectly fine. 
but you look at that and you say that's your way to get the r out and have this entire formula only in terms of h which is what you want so let's use that volume would equal one third pi and instead of r squared we'll put 2h squared and then we follow up with a times h now you're going to want to do yourself a favor here don't take the derivative yet you want to simplify this thing first make it work for you so you're going to have 2 pi uh, i'm sorry one third pi the 2h squared is going to become 4h squared and then we multiply by the h and then we can clean it up one last time maybe put the constants together the four thirds and the pi and then the h squared and h would be h cubed and now you really have a very easy derivative to take with respect to t things are pretty smooth sailing from this point so if we take the derivative with respect to t dv dt would equal bring the three in front the threes would cancel you get four pi h squared and then we multiply by dh dt and now we just have to remember what we're trying to solve for is this underlined piece and everything else we should know and i think we do the dv dt as we said is going to be 20 and we're going to find this rate of change of height as soon as we uh, plug in two for the height there and when we get the dh dt by itself well i've got a four times a four so that's essentially going to be a 16 times pi so i'm just going to flip this around if it's okay i'll put my dh dt first and then i'll have 20 as my numerator and 16 pi as the denominator and i think it's really important to mention i despise diagonal fraction bars in other words students that might write something like this it's bothersome to me because it's really hard to tell where is that pi is it in the denominator with the 16 is it being multiplied by the fraction 20 over 16 so let's try to write horizontal fraction bars it'll make your teacher really happy now as you can see this would reduce you could factor out a a four out of the numerator and a four out of the denominator and they would reduce away and then all that's left to do is put your label and since this is a linear measurement of height height would be measured only in inches and of course our time element would be seconds so we have 5 over 4 pi inches per second about 5 twelfths of an inch right 5 twelfths of an inch that's probably half of an inch a little bit less every single second that you're pouring sand. You'll never go to the beach and not think about calculus again. We got a couple more videos for related rates still coming up. Uh, we got another cone problem and we're going to close it all out with our wonderful shadow problem. Definitely check those out. We always thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.